good morning, everyone, and welcome to Emmanuel United Church of Christ, where we have a passion for God and, and compassion, compassion for all. all. We want to say thank you for joining us this morning. We are currently being live streamed on Facebook, and later on this afternoon, we will be posting our more professional video on our website, EUCCFL.org. I'd like to personally give thanks for those who are participating in today's worship service. Ari, who is our director of music, Carnid, who is our pianist, and Ruthie, our administrator, who is videotaping today's service. We first want to start off by saying happy birthday this week to John Hamlin, to Doreen Stokes, to Emily Muma, to Monique Manfield, to Nancy Beatty, and Cody Ansley. Yes, a lot of birthdays. And happy anniversary to Lee and Melrose, as well as to Cody and Rachel. We want to remind everyone that you can check us out on our YouTube channel, and you can also go to our website, EUCCFL.org, anytime during the worship if you care to donate to the church, make an offering, or since it is Agape Sunday, perhaps you want to make a special offering to our Shepherd's Pantry, knowing that the next few months are crucial to our citizens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, over the past month, we've had something special where we've been able to honor our living saints. Today, the living saints that we want to honor are you, and you, and you. All the people who are home watching us right now, we want to celebrate you as our living saints, praying that God gives you the strength to survive, but to also find a way to thrive during this time in American history. Amen. And now you are encouraged to take a moment and to let go of all of your stress and your fears all the worries you have and the concerns and the thoughts about the weeks ahead. And allow yourself to be still. To take a deep breath in and allow yourself to be present and to experience the compassionate, healing love of Jesus Christ. And as our musicians usher us into a holy space and a holy time, we now welcome you with our Emmanuel UCC mission theme song. Amen. Sing along with me. We are Emmanuel. We Lord, we get, we share. We shall go through the Spirit the ways we can our shalling is our thing so not a fit to learn so not a witness to God like we shine across the land Amen and I now invite you to join with us in the call to worship based on Psalm 102 I know many of you have received the liturgy at home, so please read along with us. The Lord is enthroned forever. Christ's name endures to all generations. God has compassion on our community. The appointed time has come. The nations revere the name of the Lord. Jesus hears the prayers of the destitute and of the scared. We are gathered to worship the one true God. Long ago, the foundations of the earth were laid. The heavens are the work of God's hands. The, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit is poured out. out. All, All of our creation praises, praises God's, God's name. name. Amen. John is saying the hymn, when peace like a river, it is way well with my soul. Mm -hmm. 
When peace like a river hath went in my home, when sorrows like sea be lost wrong, wherever my love you have taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul. say amen. Amen. amen it is now time for our call to confession again if you have the liturgy at home please feel free to join with us the Lord is merciful and compassionate filled with unfailing love let us bring our confession into the sacred time knowing that God will hear our prayers and forgive and may the people say Jesus is our teacher. We become vulnerable when we make our foundation something else. The idols of the world may try to distract us, but it is in you, O Christ, we trust. Erase our transgressions. Surround us with your grace. Remind us of our own baptism. The Lord hears our confession removes our debts, and restores us into righteousness. We find rest in the comfort of God's love, knowing that we are redeemed. Amen. Amen.
mystère, il est sans prier, il est sans Amen. We are so blessed to have such talented artists as Ari and Carneed. Thank you so much. Amen. Our reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, 1 to 8, and 12 to 13. As he came out of the temple, one of the disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of war, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, and there will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Brother will betray brother to death, and father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God, and let everyone say, Amen. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in a moment of centering prayer. Gracious and Holy One, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to gather that even if we are not in the same physical space, that we are able to share this moment through the gifts of technology. May your Holy Spirit fall upon us, allowing these words to be spoken calmly and clearly, and may they provide spiritual nourishment throughout the rest of the week. It is in your Son's name we pray and we say, Amen. 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 Well, today's reading uses words like beware and be alert. And they are timely words for a time like this. And many of us right now are in alert and perhaps too high of an alert. Many of us are on alert filled with adrenaline, which has placed us into a fight, flight, or freeze mode. And as a result, it is most likely burning you out and wearing you down. And yes, there are those who are using this time to chill out and relax and sleep in, but there are others who are completely and totally on. The TV is on, the news is on, Facebook is on, Twitter is on, the cell phone, phone is constantly on, and your car may be resting in the garage, but your own inner engine is revving away. Jesus says to be alert. But how much more alert can a nation be? Unless, if there is another kind of alert that Jesus is telling us about. Today's reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, which was written during a very dangerous time in history. 
Back then, the temple was this glorious building to behold. It was about nine stories tall with stones that were 40 feet in length. Some of the stones actually weighed over 100 tons. And the temple was covered in gold. So much gold, they said, that when the light hit it the right way, you could almost be blinded. But the temple was not perfect. Corrupt leaders had slithered their way into the liturgy. False preachers were using the temple for their own gain and their own fame, but as a symbol. The temple was there to represent the presence and to represent the love of God. The temple was supposed to be a stable center of society, a place in which you could go and you can find calm even when the world seemed to be in utter chaos. If the temple stood safe, the people of Jerusalem were safe. Here, we have Jesus telling of a time in which the temple will fall, in which those 40-foot stones will be toppled over. And Jesus tells of a time in which there will be total chaos, fear and worry, and unfortunately, the temple will not be there to calm their fears or to provide the citizens the assurance they need. I wonder how many people are feeling that way right now. That we are at a time in American history in which we could all use a sign and symbol of stability, but where is the church? Where is the building? Why aren't we all gathered together today inside of this sanctuary? And I also wonder how many people are saying, where's the pastor? Why isn't the pastor coming inside my home? Why am I in the hospital sick and alone and the pastor is not standing beside me? I wonder how many are wondering, where are my church friends? Where's the food we used to share? Where are my sisters and my brothers in Christ? I mean, where are the hugs? And where are the kisses? And where are the handshakes? And where are the embraces? You know, the time we need positive touch the most, and we can't. The time we need to gather as a unified body inside the safety and the sacredness of the church and we can't. And it is so heartbreaking. The time we most need our old time religion. And instead we are being forced to step into a new age of technology and Facebook and online and live stream and click and play. In today's reading, Jesus told us of the worries and the woes. But Jesus also spoke about something else. Jesus spoke about hope. In verse 13, he says, The one who endures will be saved. The one who endures will be saved. Hope and endurance. That ability to hold on, to be strong, to get back up even when you have fallen down. The ability to finish the race, even if your shirt is drenched with sweat, even if your heel has broken off, even if your hair is a hot mess, even if your wig has blown off. Jesus encourages us to endure, not because he thinks we will fail. He encourages us to endure because he wants to see us succeed. We can endure. Church, can we get an amen? Amen. We amen. can endure. And how? By being alert. 
but perhaps not the kind of high alert that we and the nation seem to be on. You know, I don't think Jesus is calling us at this moment to continue this high level of unhealthy Facebook and newscasts and fearful ways that is so filled with adrenaline and for some people absolutely no sense of sleep or rest. Perhaps the kind of alert that we can most benefit from is the kind of alert and awareness and being that was found in the Garden of Eden. Maybe the kind of alert that Jesus Christ is talking about is more along the lines of the Ten Commandments, Sabbath, kind of alert. Okay. What do we mean by that? Perhaps what Jesus wants is for us to be alert to the ways in which God is present in our day-to-day -day life. Perhaps what Jesus wants at this moment is that Garden of Eden, Ten Commandments, Sabbath kind of alertness in which we are paying attention to nature, the sounds of the birds that seem to be singing more sweetly than they have before, in the sleep that is restorative in which now people are starting to wake up because of the sun and not because of an alarm clock. To be alert to all the different ways in which Jesus Christ is being present in our lives and in our community. The unexpected kindness of strangers. The giving to people in need the neighbors and church members who have come by with bars of soap and rolls of toilet paper, the ways in which people of our community, like Bolton Winpenny, have challenged people to give to the Shepherd's Pantry. And through that act of Christ-like generosity, we have now been guaranteed at least two months' worth of food for the hungry citizens of our county. Perhaps Jesus is calling us to be alert to the Holy Spirit and the ways that the Holy Spirit moves, presenting new ways to live, new ways to communicate, new ways to share music and dance and song and stories and art, new ways to connect to one another and to God that is beyond stones and walls and paper books and fixed time frames and door handles. You see, we are living in unsure times. And Jesus spoke of a very scary time. Mark was writing for people who were going through the very things that Jesus was talking about. So what do we do? And how do we live during this time in American history? What is the good news? Well, for today, let us take this call to be alert. And instead of filling it up with so much adrenaline and high-octane worry, let us see this as an invitation. An invitation to be present. An invitation to be aware. An invitation to be calm. An invitation to know we're doing the best that we can do and that we are each individually enough. Perhaps this is an invitation for us to become rerouted to the earth, to be connected to God, to find Sabbath rest even when there is worry. Perhaps this call to be alert is really an invitation to look for the ways nature is making God known, the way our neighbors are being the hands of Christ, and the revolutionary ways in which the Holy Spirit is acting. And God is saying, if my eye is on the sparrow, you can best believe that my eye is on you. Amen. May you find peace and comfort in today's message. And may we all say, Amen. Amen.
We now invite you, no matter where you are, to take a few moments of silence, and then we'll go into prayers for the people and the community and the world, followed by the Lord's Prayer. And it's the tradition here at Emmanuel UCC that we use the word debts and debtors, but we invite you to use whatever words you feel most comfortable with. Let us now enter into a time of silence. Gracious and Holy One, we place our focus on you at this moment, knowing that you are our rock and our salvation, and that it is your Son, Jesus Christ, who is calling us to endure and to be mindful. This morning, we lift up those who are close to us, praying for Shirley and Kurt, for Maureen and Reverend Astor, we lift up the family of Winnie McGee during their time of grief, as well as those who've been affected by the death of Bruce. And Holy One, we also pray today for our brother and sister John and Carol, who are with Diane. May you touch their hearts and bring, against, bring upon them a sense of peace. Holy One, we pray for our students and teachers of Highlands County. We pray for our nation, for our president and all the medical employees. We pray for our world, for our brothers and sisters in China who are going back to work. But over a billion people in India who are now experiencing a lockdown. But Holy One, we are also mindful that in you there is hope and joy and celebration. So we do give thanks for the sense of rest and Sabbath, for people like Bolton who challenge us to be giving and generous. We give thanks for the healing that is taking place throughout nature. And we give thanks in advance for the promise of tomorrow. And in the words of your son, Jesus Christ, we unite as one voice across the nation to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sing blessing and assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine! Here of salvation. Purchase of God, more and the Spirit washes his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praise is my Savior all, all day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praise is my Savior. All, all day long, perfect submission, perfect delight, mission no rapture, no worse than my son, angels descending, bring for above, because of mercy, whispers of God. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all, all day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all, all day long. Amen. 
Now we come to such a vital time of our worship service, an opportunity for you to present your offering. And as we talk about offerings and donations, I think of a story that was so vital to my faith from 1 Kings chapter 17. And it's the story of a widow who's living during a time of famine and how the prophet Elijah comes to her and asks if she can make him something to eat. And she says, but all I have left is a little bit of oil and a little bit of flour. Mm. And Elijah says, I'll make this promise to you that if you make me something to eat, you will never run out of food. Mm -hmm. And so this humble widow steps out on faith and she takes a little bit of oil and a little bit of flour and makes for Elijah something to feast upon. Mm -hmm. And the miracle upon miracles is that no matter how long that famine lasted, she always had something to eat and she always had something to share. Amen. It is with that spirit we now invite you to go to our Facebook page and our website, EUCCFL.org, and you will see a blue button that says Donate. Our administrator, Ruthie, has been working so faithfully all week to get this up and running. And when you click the Donate button, you can see that you can give to the general fund, to the offering, you can give to per capita. You can also give to the Shepherd's Pantry, which is a monthly service that feeds about 150 to 200 families per month. Now today is not just a regular Sunday, it's also our Agape Sunday, in which we traditionally do take two offerings. One goes to the general fund and one goes to the Shepherd's Pantry. We invite you to go ahead and click on that button, make your donation. You can make it through check, credit card, debit card, and you can also do it the old school way which is by putting your donation into an envelope and mailing it to Emanuel UCC, 3115 Hope Street, Sebring, Florida, 33875. We give thanks that you have joined us in worship today, and we hope you feel as spiritually nourished as we all feel in participating this morning. Amen. And now, as we prepare to leave this holy time, we are each called to step out into this new world and to be alert. But don't allow it to be an adrenaline-filled, chaotic sense of alertness, but to allow it to be a time in which you are aware of how God is moving, how the love of Christ is present, and how the Holy Spirit continues to speak. And with that knowledge, may you continue to do justice to love being kind to one another, and to humbly and faithfully walk with our Lord. Amen, amen. and amen. We love you.